how exactly does the mother or the person or the health professionals how can they prevent it okay so here's how you 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 may prevent cerebral palsy right <clears throat> number one um plan the pregnancy although in zambia <clears throat> in most cases we just get pregnant mm. uh, where we don't have that culture of planning our pregnancies uh, which brings me to another issue we don't have the culture of doing pre conceptual medicals um kalenga asked me about medicals earlier but there's something called preconceptual med medicals where you do medicals before you even consider having a baby with someone you go for tests all right huh. um the other issue here is go for antenatal early the moment you discover that you're pregnant go for antenatal don't wait we have this culture of saying for some strange reason, there's some, you know, uh, there's some superstition around it. No, go to the, to the hospital, let them do antenatal early, do ultrasounds early, do everything early. The moment you discover you're pregnant, why do you do that? For example, what's your shoe size? There's a... Size, size, size what? Are you size four or three? Five. Size five. Okay, five is good. So if you have a smaller shoe size, chances are that your pelvis is also small and it is small to, it's too small to have a baby pushed out. <coughs> All right. So when, when your pelvis is small as a woman, uh, there's what we call, because the head in medicine is called the cephalus or cephalic. So the what we call cephalopelvic disproportion, where the head is considered bigger than the pelvis. Not that the head of the baby is big. It's just that the size of the pelvis, the bone of the woman around the waist is small for the baby to be able to pass. So if that bone is small and you try to push the baby to come out, those are people, more than that, at when they prolonged labor. Prolonged labor you end, you end up with a child who is, who is starved of oxygen. When the child is starved of oxygen, the brain dies. When the brain dies, other children end up with a, a cerebral pause. But look, are you saying that women, or they sh is there extra care taken, or they should not just have children if they have, say, the way she looks and her shoe size is less than a size four? If you are small, uh, consider a cesarean section. All right. Yes. Because you know what came to my mind immediately, and I I don't know how to phrase this without this guy about mode of delivery. So at mode of delivery, if you without insulting anyone, your pelvis is... uh, midgets. Um, you have to check the pelvis. In them as well. Yes. Okay. If the is size that, is that even a respectful word? If 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 the size of the baby they are carrying is are we okay? Small, if I can size... say midget. Yeah. I'm not sure what political correctness hey, is there. Guys, I, I, I don't want to offend people. But, but, but in I'm sorry those, if I use the wrong word and you're offended. In, in, I'm, I'm really sorry. Small people, right? Yeah. When, when small people are pregnant, we generally tend to do cesarean sections on them mm. to avoid the same things I'm talking about. Yeah. So, so, so any condition, for example, you, a child has fetal distress. Okay. For any reason, either fetal distress because the mother has hypertension in pregnancy and the hypertension wasn't properly taken care of. That's why you have to go for antenatal. We catch these things early like hypertension because we don't want you to come with fetal distress. For example, you have hypertension in pregnancy, you were missing antenatal, you end up with preeclampsia and eclampsia and you're in labor. That affects the, the, the quality of the baby that you're going to have. It, it, that's why I, that's what I meant when I said these things can be prevented. Yeah, there's something that I don't think I've heard before. I haven't heard often. Something that you just said when you're planning on having a baby, both of you should go for tests. You have to, like Banachi and Busa, if they are listening, church church leaders, if they are listening, because they are the ones who marry people. Let's normalize doing pre-marital, pre-conceptual medicals. I'll tell you why. Mm. Let's assume. You, you have sickle cell in your family or there was sickle cell in your family some generations ago and you didn't know and you're a carrier of sickle cell. 
And uh, because you're a carrier, you don't have symptoms for sickle cell. So you don't know. Your partner is also a carrier for sickle cell and they don't know. You get married and you start having children with sickle cell. That can be managed. If you are both carriers, the question now you need to ask yourselves is that are we emotionally prepared to look after the child? Should this child that we're carrying or we potentially carry be born with sickle cell? If the answer is yes, and you are, you know, emotionally, physically, financially capable of looking after a child with sickle cell, should it happen? At least you are prepared. Mm. Ideally, you should be now reconsidering. Do you think it's a wise decision for us to proceed and get married, knowing fully well that we may get a child with sickle cell? Because if you're a carrier for sickle cell, then you need to marry somebody who does not have sickle cell. For you to be completely sure that this one... Yes, then you will not have children who have sickle cell. You may have other children who are, who are carriers, but they will not have sickle cell. Mm. But if you're a carrier and you marry someone who has a carrier, there's a 25% chance that uh, you will have a child with sickle cell. But then you need to know and prepare yourself. Yes, because most of us is just, example, oh, baby, I'm pregnant. Oh, wow. For example, I'm sure not that you actually sat down and said, okay, this year we're going to, you know, you just find that the uh, contraceptive didn't work. <laughs> Another example. Yeah. Have you seen women who they get pregnant quite all right, but they lose the pregnancy? Yeah. And they keep saying, ah, no, obvious, banamulo, banamulo, wanumfuit. Now, for some of them, not all of them, for, for a good number, actually, there's a good explanation for that. That can be prevented and managed with the same preconceptual test. Blood groups. Hmm. Do you know blood groups? No. Oh, see? Da. You know your blood group? You know your blood group? Okay. Just hold your question. So, so let, let me make a point on the blood group yeah. issue. If, for example, she has a blood group all negative, and my blood group is all positive, and I get her pregnant, her first pregnancy will go on just fine with no issues. And she better not have an abortion with that pregnancy because if you do, that's the last viable pregnancy you ever have. Uh, Here's what happens. I never expect it. When you're all negative and I'm all positive and I get you pregnant and you don't know, you go ahead and you carry the baby one, a bad one, and you didn't know. And we didn't do this premarital testing. The next time I get you pregnant, your womb will reject the child. Why? Because your womb got sensitized to my O plus, my O plus. And it's treating, it will start treating the child the way your body treats a virus or a disease. As far as your uterus is concerned, this is a disease to be gotten rid of. So, after some pain, mimba yachoka. What? So to prevent that, when you got pregnant the first time, there's a drug you were supposed to be given to stop your body from rejecting future pregnancies. Now you see why checking your blood group is important, especially for women. Even you guys, before you marry someone, check their blood group. And, uh, and, and I hope they didn't have an abortion in the past. I never expected it. <laughs> you learn something new every day. She, she has a question. Yeah. You, the mic, mic. Huh? Um, hi, my name is Chico. I'm visiting the studio today. My question was on blood groups because um, I've noticed, especially in Africa, there's a tendency of people to fall in love and to believe that love is enough and not get the necessary tests done before committing to marriage because it can cause issues like that and then there's another another kind of like healthcare gap that i see is um when parents have children who are on the neurodivergent scale um or on the neurodivergent spectrum parents treat that kind of condition with a certain denial especially men and since this is a men-centric episode could you just touch a little bit on like the neurodivergent spectrum diseases like adhd and how men can handle that when it comes to supporting their family right um and, and you're right about uh testing and, and and i think we've we've made that point children who are born on the spectrum 
it, it's a traditionally, and, and, and I'm glad you've raised that point. We've seen men abandon women uh, because they had a child who has a challenge, whether physical or mental or whatever. We've seen men abandon uh, women and go and marry somebody else. This is your problem. It's got nothing to do with me. Um, and and it, it, is, it is very unfortunate. It's, it's basically a lack of information. I know a gentleman, I won't mention his name, and he's a good example of what we want to see in men. 